Well, hello. I'm in soundscape mode tonight. Yes. So what I've been doing, I have a project next week that I'll be recording big soundscape guitars. Um, it's going to be focusing around guitars, but there will be drums and synth stuff as well. It, a sound design project. And um, it, it's, it has to be big. The sound has to be big. And to get big, generally, reverb and delays. I'm covered for reverbs, uh, sorry, delays, but I'm not so covered for reverbs. And this is why you see two reverbs. I've got the Valhalla Room and the Fab Filter. Uh, just demos, because that's how we roll in the studio. Um, and I've just been messing around with them for the last couple of hours. And this is literally the session for that. Um, and so something happened. It's all right, it's not, not an amazing thing, but I thought it was worthy of a quick video. So basically, um, like I say, I've got this project next week. And one of the first things I did was I went to YouTube to try and find soundscape guitars. And I went through quite a few videos and quite a few demonstrating reverbs and delays, but I needed m musical content, soundscape stuff, rather than going to try and buy a CD. Uh, because what I need, I need some soundscape stuff in the background so I can evaluate these reverbs and context, because you know I like context, right? Um, with just some basic drums to see how big reverb sounds on the drums with some sound with some soundscapey stuff, right? And uh, lo and behold, um, one of the few people I subscribe to, Tom Junkie XL, a guy I've been watching since the early nineties, um, and he's now this uh, really huge, massive uh, film scoring guy. He works in big blockbusting films, and he's an incredibly talented, good guy, and. Uh, he just had the perfect video for me to pilfer uh, a, a, a bed, uh, you know, some noise for me to evaluate these plugins. I won't be stealing this, his music or anything like that. It's just for this little session. And this was the video I took it from. I'll just give you a quick listen to that. Start with that. Doesn't have a lot of pedals, huh? I'll be lucky to borrow three next week. But I have some stuff here I can use as well. I'm actually going to put my glasses on so I can actually see a little better what I'm doing. Sore eyes, you know, getting older. I know how you feel, Tom. Standard. Standard. The standard. Everything this guy does I like, not just in this video, just everything. I thoroughly recommend you uh, sub to his channel if you're not. He's like a, it's one of the top three on YouTube in my opinion. And he's certainly beginning to get the subs. But anyway, he does that for about 15 minutes, right? And um, so I, I pilfered a little bit here and there, like... Context, you see, I like to hear stuff in context. And we have a little bit there. So I've got a bit of a drone thing going on there. And uh, I put even more reverb and delay on that because I want to make sure that these reverbs can cut through, right? So this is the idea for me to test it, evaluating these reverbs just for myself to find out which one I was going to buy. Um, so I programmed up some very basic drums like this. Became apparent pretty early on that I need to beef up that drums a bit, the core sound without putting any reverb or anything on. So I wheeled in the Arouser. Uh, it's my favourite compressor for electronic stuff. I, transparency doesn't do well in my studio. I need stuff that gives me quan and character. The Arouser does that. I used to have uh, four of the hardware. It's based on the uh, distressor. I used to have four of those compressors. 
I don't regret selling them. I had them at a time when I, I needed them for something, but um, I wouldn't mind getting a couple again, though. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, no, it didn't go crazy, just, um, just give it a bit more punch, right? And then I needed some reverb. So what we have is the Valhalla Room, this one, and the Fab Filter. Now, I'm intentionally being OTT with the reverbs, reverbs here. They're not, there's nothing subtle about this, you know? I'm just checking that I am recording. The amount of times I've actually started and I've not been recording. Um, and, uh, yeah, so don't be thinking subtlety. There's nothing subtle about this. It's all about creating a big, a big space. But what I'm actually after, just to explain this as well, this is important. Um, I want it big. Like, everything's going to be big. The guitars, it'll be easy, easy enough to do. It'll be huge reverbs, but it won't just sound like, you know, uh, engineers and producers and musos, they'll know that it's reverb, but the average person, they'll just think, big sound, right? I don't want them to hear what they would generally call echo. I'm in a cave, you know? Um, so this is my personal brief, and I've got the sound in my head, and I know it's not an easy thing to do, to get a big reverb sound without making it sound like a reverb, right? And I'm not there yet. Uh, this was just me experimenting, I'm getting there, but then something happened, which we'll find out about in a minute. So here's the uh, the Valhalla. And I'm like, okay, but, you know, I'd messed around with the parameters a, a bit. There's quite a few to mess around with there. And I'm like, okay, but I still, I can tell instantly that's just, a big reverb on some drums, right? Now the uh, Fab Filter. And, you know, it's pretty much in the same ballpark. They both sound different from each other, but... Um, but I'm getting there, right? So what I would have done if I hadn't started making the video, I would have started EQing uh, doing a bit more with the source sound, uh, putting something on the returns of these reverbs. Uh, I know that Fab Filter's got its own built-in EQ, but I would have put another EQ on, maybe some compression. I would have had to do things to blend it in and probably spend a good bit more time messing around with the reverb settings, right? So, but generally, not too bad. And, you know, I like context, so with another sound, something coming from the sampler, the S770. Because I want to see if the reverb's going to disappear, at which point, you know, I'd have more things than that on the go, not many more, much more though. And then at some point, the vibe, the big vibe, starts to disappear. So I wanted to find that that's also what I'm evaluating, to decide which plugin. So I'd gotten to that stage and I thought, right, okay, well maybe, maybe I should try the uh, the DP4. This is an external effects box that I've got. It's four units in one one box, but you can address each unit individually uh, from a, a different auxiliary send, or you can put them all in serial, like have it as four effects as one one effect, you know, just one after the other and address from one auxiliary send. But uh, I tend to just have it as a four unit effects box. Um, so I copied the, the drums, this little drum rack, and then, let's turn off the rolling just now. So there's the basic drums, it's just, it's going through the DP4. And as I was flicking presets, just bear with me, I need to go over here. This happened. You hear that? Let's get it on its own. Ah. So, that's not a gated reverb. What you're actually hearing is those samples have a tiny little bit of spring reverb. I sampled those drums through the retroverb. Just put a little tiny bit of spring reverb on them. Not for this session, I just happen to have those samples. Um, and 
what it is, it's an inverse expander. So if you don't know what an inverse expander is, let's, uh, oh, where is it? Let's find out. So, yeah. So inverse expander mixing, I did the Google thing, right? We formulate and prove inverse mixing lemas in the settings of simplicial complexes and k-uniform. Let's get that k-uniform thingy that you get in meter plugins. Hypergraphs. In the hypergraph setting, we extend results of Ballou and Lenial for graphs, obviously, in the simplicial complex setting. Our results answer a question of Pajanvetsky et al. Who wouldn't know that? You know, it's all about the hypergraph K uniform and the blue and the lanial, you know? So, yeah, well, that's not really what it is. That's a maths thing. And I think the inverse, the name of this patch on the DP4, this one, inverse, I think it's just the name of the the, the patch. Expander, That that is an effect. What that does... If you imagine that in between my hands there is the uh, it's the sound of a drum loop. The top levels there, the bottom levels there. What the inverse ex ex it, yeah we're gonna co we're gonna refer to it as the inverse expander. What it does it takes the low level stuff and only brings that up in volume. So it's kind of like a limiter compressor, but it, it's supposed to leave all the other stuff. So you set the threshold at a certain level and it'll only bring up that stuff. Now you can imagine interesting and weird things would happen like that. A tricky kind of effect to use in a, a, a everyday pop song. Not that this is a pop song, mind you, but you know where I'm coming from. Um, and I've just set it to capture pretty much everything, but below the, the level where the main sound body of that drum, the, the kick drum and snare drum is. Now if you listen, you can hear it really working, that reverb little bit of reverb. You can see it in the waveform there. It's like practically nothing. It's a tiny little bit. And um, it's really bringing that up. But it also has done something to the main body of the, the kick drum and the snare drum. Nothing major, but bear in mind, it's not EQ or anything. It's just, you know, it's just that, right? So we'll put Tom back in. And then I thought, well, I still want to hear reverb from the DP4. So, um, here we go. So I'm going to send, now I've got to be careful here because I can get howling, crazy feedback. Uh, yeah, I think it's this one. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm just adding in uh, a reverb from the DP4 as well. I just went to a hall program. I haven't even bothered editing it. That's what happened. Let's uh, put another uh, uh, Junky XL loops in there. This one. You can feel it. You can feel it. So, right, okay. I'm not there yet, but... I could tell just by that that I'm definitely getting in the ballpark of that rather large David Lynch kind of soundtrack in the movies, um, Twin Peaks, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but bigger, right? We're going for big here. And uh, let's put the rolling sound in, just to fill up spaces. And I'll play along a little bit. For this coming session, I will be doing stuff like that as well. Dubby sort of delays going on, going off here, here, left, right, and center. So that's that. So no reverb, just inverse expander, and then reverb. But let's try it with the. Uh, let's send the. 
DP4 signal to the fab filter. Not bad, not bad. Now to the Valhalla room. Not bad, not bad. Now let's go back to the ZP4 reverb. You can hear that the DP4 reverb, it's a little bit more crunchy. See, I didn't think the DP4 could do... It, it can't do lush as well as this Fab Filter in Valhalla. But I think with a little bit of... Bear in mind, I haven't tweaked the DP4 reverb at all. That's just the preset. The only thing I did was turn the mix right around to wet. And I did spend about an hour messing around with the Valhalla and the Fab Filter. And quite, quite a lot of work to even just... You know, to try and get myself in the ballpark. And even then, I know that I'm going to have to do more work. And I would have to do that with the DP4 as well. But the point is, it was very interesting that uh, literally when I got the Inverse Expander uh, preset on, on the go, just had to adjust the threshold a bit, and then put on a, a, a reverb, uh, just a standard hall reverb. And uh, I, was a, I think I'm a bit closer, definitely the body of the sound, but I think even the reverb's a little bit closer. It would probably just need a bit of EQ, uh, uh, there's not that many parameters well there is actually quite a lot of parameters that you can edit when I think about it um, and I think I could get there and uh, I think the moral is if you're on a road guy you know it may fork off to another one and it might be a different better one who knows so so <laughs> it's, not, uh, it's not a revelation or anything I know that but it is interesting that a 25 year old box uh, around about that uh, can compete with these well, brand new 21st century uh, huge lush reverbs, you know, not bad at all. And uh, and thanks to Tom Chunky Excel for supplying the very nice background there. And the delay, the other delay that I had, which I've also been evaluating, is a dub station audio damage. This is a demo as well because this is a professional outfit here. And um, but I am actually just evaluating that. I was evaluating that yesterday with uh, along with the Valhalla uh, reverb. Is that, that is the name? Yeah, Valhalla is the name of the company. Um, and uh, I decided that I, I'd probably go for the dub station because I'll be doing this project in Cubase. I actually use Cubase. I'm re I really just use Ableton Live for these videos and sometimes when I quickly need to test something, but I, for like the stuff I do, the work that I do, I use Cubase because it's just got everything I need. And I, I like the MIDI editing and I need the MIDI editing. Um, and uh, I, although I do like this Ableton Echo plugin, which I think is the, the best effect uh, that they've got for Ableton Live, it's the best one that they've designed. Um, I obviously I can't use that in Cubase, so I need something that can do better dubby delays than what I currently have. And while the Valhalla one is super, and it can do all sorts of things and got a vast range of tones you can get out of it, um, I, f I, I felt that I would just end up tweaking it, you know, forever basically. As for this one, you can just kind of get on with it really fast, you know.
anyway, I think that'll do. I just thought it'd be quite interesting to... It's really just about what happens when you're in the studio. You, you're going down one path and all of a sudden you, you press a few buttons on something. Oh, right, that's another option for me. And uh, as for deciding between the Valhalla and the Fab Filter, right now I'm leaning towards the Fab Filter. Again, uh, I think it's interface. I'm not just a one-button guy, but uh, I totally understand this. And, I mean, obviously I can make that really big, and that's great. Um, I'm not sure yet, but right at this present moment, I'm leaning towards the Fab Filter. I, I completely get where this reverb is coming from. And this has got quite a lot of options, a lot of uh, models, and uh, you got the a few more knobs to kind of play about with. It's not a, it's not a complicated plug-in though. I'm just maybe thinking because of the built-in EQ in this one, I can quickly tailor the sound without having to use another uh, another plug-in. Uh, anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching.